Before you skip ahead, you really need to know that what you will see in Microsoft webinars is going to depend heavily on the admin settings in Microsoft Teams. At the end of the video, I will include some additional detail for those of you whose admins may have decided to keep the older Teams webinar experience. Welcome everyone. Today we're going to talk about creating webinars in Microsoft Teams. I have navigated to Microsoft Teams and to get started, go to the New Meeting button on the upper right hand corner and then click the drop down. From there, you need to select Webinar. A webinar draft page will open. Notice that there are several grayed out options. You must enter a webinar title before you can save. After saving, the grayed out options will become available. This webinar will be called Power Apps for Beginners. While I'm on the details page, I need to make some other changes. The default date for the webinar will be the current date and the default time will be the next closest half hour. So in this example, it is 2.15, so the webinar will start at 2.30. This is not what I need, so I will update the information in these fields. Next, I want to give the webinar a description. Whatever you type in here will show up in the details section of the webinar registration page. Since I created this meeting, by default I am a presenter. I can add additional presenters if I like. For example, Adele is going to be a presenter as well. Any name in the presenters field will display on the registration page. If you want to have someone help manage the webinar, you can put their name in the co-organizers field. Their name will not be on the registration page. For example, when I give a webinar, my moderator's name is added to the co-organizer field. The event access section is used to determine who can register for this webinar. By default, it is set to public, meaning anyone on the internet can view the registration page and sign up. You can choose to limit the registration to your organization, meaning only people in your company can sign up for the event. In this example, I will click the radio button for your organization. Now I will go to the top left side of the screen to save and send invites so that I can begin customizing the webinar registration. Notice that the menu items in the left navigation are no longer grayed out and you can also update the meeting options. I'm going to start with the meeting options because the default settings for webinars are very different from the settings for a traditional meeting. This actually generates a lot of frequently asked questions. Click on meeting options. Another window will appear. The first option is who can bypass the lobby. For webinars, it is set to people I invite, turn off, allow forwarding. What this means is only the presenters and the co-organizers will be able to bypass the meeting lobby. Everyone who registers for this webinar will be put into the meeting lobby when they try to join the event. The presenters and the co-organizer will have to let people in one by one. For larger webinars, this can become time-consuming task. I tend to change the settings to people in my organization and guests because anyone who works for our company is more than welcome to attend any webinar we give. What you choose will be based on your business practices. The next big difference is microphones and cameras are turned off for attendees. This means that anyone who registers for the event cannot unmute their mic or turn on their camera. This is just not muting them when they come into the meeting, it takes away the option completely. The meeting organizers and co-organizer can turn on access during the meeting if needed. Again, depending on your business practice, this could be a good thing or a bad thing, you choose. Because I encourage participation in my webinars, I turn on the mics, but I keep the cameras off so that people in low bandwidth areas don't have a lot of lag on their end. Next, we have record automatically turned on. As soon as the first person joins the meeting, a recording and transcript will begin. Now, I typically turn this off because I usually join a bit early so I can set up and share my screen. I don't want those steps in the video, but again, it's up to you whether or not you want to turn this on or off. Next, we have allow meeting chat. It is set to in meeting only. This means that the attendees cannot see the chat before or after the webinar. Because I tend to share links to helpful resources, I enable meeting chat so that people can come back for the links whenever they like. Now I'm going to quickly update the meeting options to reflect my preferences. 
Then I will scroll down to the bottom of the page and click save. Now this did open in a different window, so all you have to do is close this window when you're done. I am back in the Power Apps for Beginners webinar draft. We are going to look at the left-hand navigation menu and customize the registration page. First, click on Presenter Bios. Remember, only people in the presenters field will show up on this page. I can click on the word edit next to my name and a floating dialog box will appear where I can add details that I would like to share on the registration page. My name and email address were pulled in from the company's global address list. Here you see a few fields, but they are not mandatory. I will put in my job title and maybe the URL to my personal website. Where I work, it would not be appropriate to add LinkedIn or Twitter, so I'm gonna leave those blank. The Add a Bio block is a free type field where you can enter a customized message if you like. At the top, you have the option to add a profile image. Click on Edit Image. Here, you can upload an image from your computer. Notice it says, for the best results, choose an image that's at least 463 by 358 pixels. Once you have selected your image, click on Done. These are all of the changes that I choose to make, so I'm going to click on Save to accept those changes. Next, select Theming in the left-hand navigation menu. This is where you can change the logo, theme color, and change the banner image. First, I will change the banner image. A floating dialog box will appear. You can choose an image from your computer. For the best results, choose one that's at least 920 by 230 pixels. I created a custom banner in Canva and will use that one. What I have noticed is if you use words in the banner, it is best to keep them in the center of the image. In a few moments, you will see that the edges of the banner will become fuzzy and it makes it difficult to read the words. I'm going to click Save and use this banner. Next, I will pull in my custom logo. For this one, the image should be at least 280 by 280 pixels. Choose your image and then click Save. Last, I will update the theme color. You can choose one of the nine options that are available, but there are no custom options. The theme color will be used for buttons, icons, and links on the registration site and in the emails sent to the attendees. I'm going to choose this green color and then click Save. Since we made some changes to the registration page, I want to see what they look like. So let's go to the upper right hand corner and click on View Draft. Another window will open and this is what the people will see when they use the registration link for this webinar. Notice that the left and right side of the banner have a soft blur effect. This is why I said to keep the words to the center of the image. This looks fine, so I will close the window and go back to the webinar draft. Now I will open the registration part of the navigation menu. Let's look at the configuration option. The maximum capacity for a webinar is 1,000 people, but you can enter any number between 1 and 1,000. For example, I want to limit participation to 50 people. The default registration form will require a first name, last name, email, and accepting the Microsoft Consent Agreement. You can add additional fields by clicking on plus add field. You can gather information such as job titles, addresses, etc. What you choose will depend on your business process. You can also add a few custom options like a text input box or a checkbox. For example, I know that some Microsoft environments do not automatically add the webinar event to a calendar. So I like to put in a checkbox question to have people acknowledge that they need to add this event to their calendar manually. The added questions are not required by default, but you can put a check mark in the required box to make sure that people registering for your event fill out all the fields. If you added any fields, you will need to save your changes. The last two options on this form will not have any data in them at this time. As people register, they will be added to the attendees status section. The report section will have an attendance roster after the event is over. This all looks good, so I'm going to go to the upper right hand corner of the screen and publish the registration page.
A floating dialog box will appear asking you if you really want to publish this site. Yes, I do. So I'm going to click publish one more time. A confirmation box will appear saying that everything is set up and ready to share. Copy the sharing link to provide to your intended audience. I have logged in as the fake user Nestor Wilkie and have navigated to the registration page where he can sign up for the Power Apps for Beginners webinar. Click register on the right side of the screen. The registration form will open. Because this is an event that is only available to company employees, his name and email address were automatically pulled from the global address list. If this had been a public event, the people registering will be required to type in their information. In this example, Nestor just has to put a check in the box for my custom question and put a check in the box for I have read and agree to the Microsoft events terms and conditions. After that, click register. A floating dialog box appears confirming that you are registered for the event and a confirmation email was also sent. Click the X at the top right corner of the dialog box to dismiss it. Notice that the registration page has updated. Nestor can see that his status is registered. If you click the drop down next to that, you will see an option to cancel the registration. There is an add to calendar button that you can use to create a .ics download that can be used to put the event on your calendar. Also notice that the registration box updated to show a message that lets you know you can only join the event 15 minutes before it begins. So I know that people lose track of the registration links all the time. So I popped on over to Nestor's Outlook where you can see that he did indeed receive a registration email. Now my test tenant does provide the option to accept a meeting invite from the email. If you do not see this option on your screen, it is either unavailable in your tenant or your admin has turned it off. Let's go ahead and click the green check mark to accept the calendar invite. Now let's flash forward and go to our calendar and say that it is now time to join the event. Nestor can double click on the calendar invite and scroll down where he will see a join the event button. Depending on the settings that the organizer chose, Nestor may or may not be waiting in the lobby until he's led into the event. We're going to navigate back to the event organizer's view of this webinar. Now, if you need to make any changes to the webinar, you can just double click it on the calendar to open up the webinar details page. If you want to see who signed up for your event so far, you can go to the attendance tab at the top of the page. Right now, it's just Nestor, but you can see how many people have registered and if anybody has canceled. I'm going to go back to the details tab so that I can click on manage event and make changes to the webinar. For example, let's pretend that Adele now has a conflict and she can no longer present this webinar with me. I can remove her by clicking the X next to her name, which will update the registration page. Then I'll need to make sure that I save and send updates. I'm a trust but verify kind of person, so we're going to click view publish site and now you see I am the only presenter for this event. Now it's your turn to go and create your webinars. If you need to learn more about Microsoft Teams, check out the playlist that I have on the screen now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, here's some bonus content material. It's entirely possible that there's a separate webinar experience depending on how your admin has set up your Teams. If I select a time for a meeting and start a, a regular type of meeting and then I realize, oh no, I needed this to be a webinar. You might see require registration drop down. If you select that and click either one of the options, this will also create a webinar. But the, the way the webinar is set up, the default meeting options and the registration experience are all different. You would customize the registration form by clicking on this link. The banner image is a different size. You don't get to put in a logo. The title, time, and details can be completely different than what you type in the meeting invite. The other big difference is that people can join this meeting whenever they want. So what I see is people getting the date and time for my webinars wrong and joining even a few days before it was supposed to happen. So if you're seeing this version of the webinar, it's because your admin has left it turned on. 
We don't know how long Microsoft is going to let both experiences run side by side, but if you need to learn about the classic webinars experience, I put a link in the description below the video so that that will hopefully help you out. When the classic webinar experience goes away, I'm going to delete this off the end of this video.